Hello everybody, welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and boy, there have been more updates on the Marvel United multiverse front. Uh, I, actually, I put off making this video, I was gonna make it yesterday, and then uh, I caught a little bit of a cold. You could probably tell, my voice does not sound a thousand million percent, uh, but I figured no sense putting it off any longer. So we're gonna talk today about all the goodies that we have unlocked over the past, what has it been, three days? This was a stacked three days. Let's start all the way back from the top. When we left off, we had just announced that Siren was the next unlockable character, and now we've got her. We've got Siren. She is the daughter of Banshee, I believe. I didn't know she was a thing. There's a whole lot about the mutants that I clearly did not know, and this campaign has taught me that I know so little about mutants that I just better shut up and smile and nod every time mutants are mentioned, because there's a whole plethora of stuff that we unlocked. I love unlocking characters like Siren, characters I've never heard of. Now she's on the board. Then Monday rolled around and Simon announced the next expansion. And that expansion is Secret Invasion. The story that's coming up next, supposedly, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know when or how. They've been really mum about when that's coming out. But that's our next expansion. And I'm gonna be real. Of all the expansions that we've gotten, so far, including one that's coming up in this video, this is the one that excites me the least. The idea of the Skrulls as villains, and only the Skrulls, just seems bland to me. I've, I've never found the Skrulls interesting as villains. They, they really never really did anything for me. It's like, okay, cool, they're shapeshifters. So is Mystique, so is Chameleon. Why are they different? So. Scrolls never appealed to me, uh, and this box of them is not my favorite. You get some good heroes, though, including Maria Hill and Quake, and I know a lot of people were asking for them. Maria Hill was somebody who actually almost made my list. She was this close to making my wish list, but I didn't put her on there because I thought, nobody's going to want Maria Hill. I, th I thought it was a sure bet that she would never get made. Again, shows how little I know because people were clamoring for her. And now we got her. I've heard a lot of the people saying that they find that Quake and Maria Hill look way too similar. Same outfit, same haircut, everything. I kind of agree. I don't know what they look like in the comics. I'm assuming it's exactly like this. Maybe changing one of their hair, or a lot of people have said give Maria Hill a gun. Uh, just something to differentiate her from Quake. I'm sure the painters don't care because as soon as they get their hands on them and their talent on them, these two ladies are going to look very, very uh, separate from one another. But yeah, overall, underwhelming expansion, but a couple of good heroes, one decent villain, fine, cool. But the good hits really start rolling in later in the week because Secret Invasion getting announced allowed us to unlock our next Winter Guard anti-hero, Ursa Major, a giant bear from Russia. And I mean, what more could you want? What more could you want? He's unlocked, which means now we have three of the four main members of the Winter Guard. Lots of people are talking about how Crimson Dynamo is not an anti-hero, and they don't like that personally. I think that's fine. We we need more red. This this box is lacking in the red department, so leave him red, plus he's Crimson Dynamo. Uh, and I think that's okay. The chances of us getting a Winter Guard team villain thing is pretty much a given because they haven't announced what Darkstar and Ursa Major are going to be like as villains. So it's only a matter of time until they give us a Red Guardian who comes with a Winter Guard villain mode and uh, the four of them can team up and, and fight you. And I like the idea that, you know, three out of those four villains could be anti-heroes and one of them is just a straight up dick and nobody, uh, you know, nobody wants to play as him. I don't know. So I like the idea that Crimson Dynamo is just red. He's just a villain. That doesn't really irk me. I'm sure there's a totally logical comic booky reason why he should be an anti-hero, but that doesn't faze me. I like this. I'm looking forward to this. The existence of Ursa Major probably indicates that whatever expansion they drop tomorrow during the live stream is going to be Thunderbolts related because that would be the best place to throw in Red Guardian. Who knows? Would I rather it be like a Midnight Suns or Spider Villains thing? Of course, but a Thunderbolts thing is just as exciting for me too. So that feels like that's the direction they're going in. And I don't know if Tomorrow's is going to be the last expansion they announce or what. But Ursa Major is here. And coming right on the heels of Ursa Major are plastic tokens. This was a big one that a lot of people liked having. 
they were hoping that it would come back and you can get plastic tokens for multiverse and plastic tokens for everything that came before if that sort of thing floats your boat. I don't know if I love the plastic tokens myself. I think the cardboard ones are fine, but I do get this game to the table a lot. So maybe it would behoove me to have sturdier tokens to use. And they look really, really good. I mean, this little picture, that's a colorful bunch of that. It looks like candy. It looks like a bowl full of candy. The next character we unlocked was another alternate skin. It was Sam Wilson as Captain America. Now, Sam Wilson's Captain America suit is so damn cool that I'm totally okay with this alternate skin. I mean, it just looks great. I still think I like the Falcon mini better. Uh, it just, with the wingspan and everything, it looks really nice. But this is a beautiful mini. I like this. I know there are a lot of people who wanted this, so I'm happy those people got what they wanted. Now you're, I think, one step closer to reenacting the plot of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't know if they have any plans to put Battlestar or uh, the Flag Smasher in here. I think maybe they're saving that for season four. Just a little lot of ground to cover. After this came another team deck stretch goal, the Sword Bearers of Krakoa. Uh, when I saw this come up, I thought that makes perfect sense to me because half of the characters in this stretch goal box look like they are wielding blades. So... Sword Bears of Krakoa sounds cool. I like these team decks sound really, really fun to me. I really like what they're doing with them. The more the merrier. That's something that was very homebrew of the first two seasons was just the idea of who do you want to play as? Well, why don't we play as the four defenders and, and just do that as a game and see what happens. So that feels like something that the team has realized people were doing anyway. So they just said, hey, let's make that even more fun by turning it into a mode. So these team decks are a brilliant addition, and now you've got Sword Bearers of Krakoa, if that's the sort of thing you're into. If you like seeing people in Krakoa get stabbed by pieces of metal, you got yourself a team. Next came Wednesday afternoon's update. We all figured it was going to be another expansion. We were right, and it is the smallest expansion we've gotten thus far, but I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty cool one. Annihilation. Annihilation is coming to Marvel United, which means we get Annihilus, of course. He's our villain. I keep almost making the mistake of referring to Annihilus as a she because that's an inside joke that I have with my friend Ryan on uh, the digital charcuterie uh, podcast that we have here, the Infinity Rewatch podcast, where uh, I claim that Christine Everhart is definitely going to come back in the MCU as Annihilus. So every time Annihilus has popped up here in the campaign. I keep thinking, oh yeah, wait, Annihilus is not actually a woman. That was just the joke that I made. But here's Annihilus. He's a big old bud. He looks cool. He looks scary. He comes with four heroes. He comes with Phyla Vel, who's got a really cool looking sword in a campaign full of really cool looking swords, I might add. Comes with Moon Dragon, who has no hair like me. Comes with Nova Prime. I didn't even know that the first Nova we got in season one was not Nova Prime. I thought that was Richard Ryder. I was wrong. It was some other dude whose name I can't even remember. So when people kept asking for Richard Ryder, I was like, uh, we have him. No, no, we don't. And now we do. And finally, Quasar, who looks gorgeous. He's got this big cape. It's fluttering in the wind. Even though there's no wind in space, I don't care. I don't, I'm not going to quote science to this game right now because what excites me about Annihilation more than anything else is two characters I can check off my list. Quasar and Annihilus himself. Which means, as we can see here, this entire expansion I plotted out is checked off. Every character that I put into this little box has been added to the game. That's wonderful. That's very, very satisfying for this guy right here. After Annihilation, they finally gave us a red villain stretch goal for the first time since way back with Iron Patriot. So it was a breath of fresh air to see somebody red. And it's this handsome gent, Blastar. I don't know who he is, but I love his name. He sounds like a 80s Saturday morning cartoon villain. Like he sounds like the kind of guy who would fight He-Man or something. I'm totally on board. Look, he's just a big monster. He's kind of furry. That's hilarious. I like Blastar. And his appearance in these stretch goal things was, was kind of what tipped people off that Annihilation was coming, because apparently the two are connected. They're enemies. See, I love learning about these new characters. I like that so much. Now I know who Blastar is, and I'll get to fight him in 12 months. Hopefully. Hopefully no longer than that. And once Blastar got unlocked, the next stretch goal talked about a master of mystic arts. 
And we all know we've already got Doctor Strange. So imagine my excitement when I opened that update and scrolled down and saw everybody's other favorite sorcerer, Wong, finally got put into this game. Wong is finally in the game. It did not feel complete to me without Wong, which is why, of course, I had him on my wish list. There he is. He's getting checked off because Wong deserves to be in this. He's too cool a character not to be in it. After Wong, they unveiled a really cool new feature in the form of campaign decks. So just like the team decks, they're taking these little homebrew things that people were doing and compiled it into a coherent, professionally made mode of playing the game. So now you have these campaign modes based on different stories that you can play through in an almost legacy game-ish way where you are completing tasks and then, you know, whether you succeed or fail, something happens and you're not allowed to look at it until you succeed or fail. And maybe one of your characters dies and that's it. They're gone. They're out of the story. You can't bring them back in this particular story. And they are using stories from all over the place. They have Executioner's Song there. So if you don't have the Apocalypse Horseman expansion like uh, like I don't, you're probably not going to be able to play that one. But that's okay because you get Maximum Carnage! Maximum Carnage is a story that you can play here. I know my best friend and I are probably going to play that one a bunch. There's also Avengers vs. X-Men. There's the Age of Apocalypse. They have got you covered. And there's a secret one that has not been revealed yet. That'll probably get revealed tomorrow. Who knows? This is another thing, just like the team decks, though, now, where they can start pulling these out one after another. They can really take advantage and milk this concept even more. There's a lot of stories to work with here. And don't be surprised if we see a Spider Geddon deck like this in the future. That Spider Geddon game is still supposed to be hitting this summer, so they'll be making one of those. That's only a matter of time. They're going to make you jump through hoops before you can fight Morlin. That's pretty much a given. So that's where we left off. As of right now, we have unlocked Wong, we've got those decks, and that's it. But if you have all been following along with these videos and you've been listening to me rant and rave and get on my little Marvel soapbox here, you know who I've been waiting to see. You know what beautiful, maniacal, orange cape-wearing villain I have been waiting to see. And lo and behold, he's next. The Hobgoblin is next. We're getting the Hobgoblin, maybe, if we make, you know, 40 grand more, which I'm pretty sure we will, especially after whatever comes tomorrow. Oh my god, this was probably the most excited I've been this whole campaign, let me tell you. It, it, was, it was beautiful. I was feeling under the weather today, like I said, I just got up, I took medicine, I sat down, I watched Rocky 2, and then when I was done, I looked at my phone and I saw that Wong had been unlocked, and Hobgoblin was next, and man, just that little bit of news kicked my cold ass because I was so happy to hear this. We are getting off Goblin. Wow. This is now I know how Meepo Monkey felt when X Factor Havoc got announced. This is I, I'm there. I'm there with you, buddy. I know how it feels. So that's it. That's all the updates that we have on MU Multiverse right now. There are, I think, five days left to go in this campaign. Um, it's already almost over. Thankfully, uh, I've got a few ideas for some videos of other things we can talk about after the campaign is over, so it won't just be radio silence here if you're a Marvel United fan. Uh, one of those ideas happens to involve an alternate storage solution for all of this. A very unorthodox one, but that's a story for another day. Until that day comes, I'm so happy that we are exactly where we are right now in this campaign. We know there's more to come, which means... Hobgoblin's gonna get unlocked, and it's only a matter of time until they do. We've got less than 12 hours. That's a lie. We've got less than 24 hours until their next live stream. In the meantime, if you have enjoyed sitting around and having fun with me and checking names off of my wish list, uh, you can always subscribe to the channel and do all that good stuff. Give it a thumbs up and see what else that we do here. We talk about film a lot and DC Comics a lot and other fun stuff a lot too. And also, if you uh, think I'm in any way entertaining, you can buy my book right now on Amazon. It's called Side Scroller and it's big and orange, but I promise you, 
it's just as fun as the Hobgoblin, who is also big and orange. Anyway, folks, that'll do for today. Thank you so much. Uh, this game is coming along really, really nicely. We're almost on the home stretch. So I'll see you all next time for whatever comes next in the master plan. <laughs>